In our artist spotlight today, we're featuring a local writer and poet who creates spaces for conversation and growth. He is Aubrey Bra uh, Barnes, rather, a roaring rhetoric. Aubrey, thanks so much for joining us today here on the show. Absolutely. Thank you all for having me. I appreciate it. Yes, no problem. So talk to us a little bit about your work with roaring rhetoric. Yeah, so uh, Roaring Rhetoric just specifically is a program, um, an open mic for uh, specifically for spoken word and poetry that I started back in 2014 after kind of seeing a need for uh, creatives who are poetry uh, writers and poets and spoken word artists, uh, them needing a space where they could like consistently perform as well as kind of like have a crowd that knows the art of spoken word because um, in the Quad Cities, in this part of the Midwest, like um, spoken word is still kind of one of those arts that people know about but they don't really know enough about it to like know kind of like the, the audience audience isms or like know how to like take in the art or not listen for certain things in the art. So um, I've been running this uh, open mic for since 2014, like I said, um, and it's just been a space for me to allow artists to kind of share their uh, share their art, share their narrative, their poetry with the uh, with a crowd that's like hungry for listening for that type of art. And it's also given a place for uh, artists like nationally to kind of come for like tour stops. I've had artists from Chicago, uh, from Atlanta, uh, from all these different places to come and uh, perform poetry, um, allowing themselves to kind of have a wider audience for uh, for them to kind of like share their art with. So it's benefited both like art and community and that's that's what we continue to do with uh, Roaring Rhetoric to this day. Absolutely, T talk to us a little bit about the venue that you currently use for uh, your uh, spoken word series. Yeah, so we told, we actually just uh, switched back to um, Ross Talks as our uh, as our venue for Roaring Rhetoric, and Ross Talks is like one of the longstanding um, uh, venues in the Quad Cities for uh, independent artists, and it's just one of these uh, one of the uh, DIY venues as well. So it just kind of puts our vision for what we see art as and what they support. It just made sense to have it there. Um, but we just started having events there. Before that, we were at Iron and Grain. Um, we just kind of like have moved uh, around a lot, um, just kind of finding spaces to kind of be consistently. But Raw Sox, Raw Sox has been one of those spaces that we've had um, our, open my consistently for the last uh, three years now. Very cool. Where did this passion uh, come for uh, come from for you? Yeah, so um, when it comes to just writing poetry, that's been a passion since I was uh, 12 or 13 years old. You know, just being somebody who, uh, who kind of grew up like very kind of uh, – socially awkward uh, for lack of a better term kind of introverted um i still had a lot of thoughts in my mind to kind of share you know i just didn't know how to audibly share that with people so poetry was my best go-to um and that passion kind of stuck for for the long haul but it wasn't until i was 23 and i found about the art about a uh, spoken word which is just poetry which is poetry and, uh being able to present that audibly it kind of was like an easy connection because i was already familiar with poetry because i've been writing since uh since I was 12 years old at that point. So um, it, was, it wasn't that long, long of a stress to kind of connect both arts. Um, and it, it just kind of took me doing it over and over and kind of like, kind of getting really like, kind of just getting charged by just sharing my work in front of people. Um, and ever since then, being 30 now, it's just always kind of been a, just a passion, just sharing my story, sharing my narrative, sharing my thoughts to people who, who both will get them and people who won't get them, but are like um, interested in the uh, our performance side. Um, that is just a continual passion for me, and I'll just be able to continue to uh, a lot the same opportunities for other creatives as well. And you also, I mean, you, you've stayed really busy. You've got a podcast, and you've written several books, and you have a new book out, it's my understanding. Yes, it's actually a book um, that's coming out um, this month, actually, um, called It Is Good, It Is Written, and it's coming out on Easter Monday. Um, and yeah, it's my third poetry book, um, and it's one of my favorites so far, um, just because I feel like it's one that kind of really captures who I am. You know, I feel like the last two books were me kind of like figuring myself out um, as poetry kind of makes you do. But I think with this third book, it's, it's, it's definitely kind of a, uh, one of those that kind of meanders through um, a lot of different feelings, emotions, thoughts um, that are all me, authentically me. So I'm um, being able to put a real, uh, a real part of me out into the world like that to share with people um, is definitely something I'm excited for and nervous, you know, because when you share thoughts like that, that are that vulnerable, um, and kind of different. There's there's a sense of like um, nervousness that comes with it, but altogether, I'm very excited about sharing this book with the world for sure. Well, I know you've got a passion to share with students and teach them uh, poetry as well. 
Uh, talk to us a little bit about your efforts with students. Yeah, absolutely. So um, as of recently, um, I've just been working through my own program that I'm starting up uh, think, uh, with my team called Young Lions Roar, which um, is a poetry program that facilitates uh, teaching poetry for both performative aspects and social emotional aspects, which is something I'm very passionate about as well, because um, beforehand I was working as a junior high teacher um, at High Roads uh, School of the Quad Cities and working with behavior students in that setting. But um, I just really couldn't uh, do what I what I wanted to do with students with having kind of that roof of education over my head. So I chose to leave that and start my own thing and continue to work with students, like not just within the Quad Cities, but all over the nation as well. Like I'm working with, te- I'm working with kids uh, in Nashville uh, with students in, um, in different states um, all over uh, the U.S. So it's something that I'm definitely passionate about. And the way, and, and for it to unfold the way it is, it's kind of like it's showing that it's it's something that I'm made to do. So it's that's definitely something, honestly, that I, I find more passion out of uh, what I do besides performing and writing books. Honestly, just being able to like work with kids and allowing them to kind of figure themselves out and kind of find their own narrative of, in life, whatever that looks like. So it's definitely some work that I'm very passionate about. Well, Aubrey, thank you so much for sharing a glimpse of your passion with us today. Um, we're inviting folks out to Roaring Rhetoric, a poetry open mic night, uh, Friday, April 8th at 7 o'clock there at Roz Talks in Rock Island. You can follow um, Aubrey's Facebook page, Roaring Rhetoric, uh, for more future events and um, all that he does. Uh, Aubrey, thank you so much for being with us today. Yeah, thank you all for uh, giving me the time.